Where does space begin? It seems like something we should know the answer to, but even experts can't seem to agree. We live at the bottom of Earth's atmosphere, which gets less dense gradually with altitude. At some point, it gets so thin that it's indistinguishable from space, a vacuum. But where does Earth's atmosphere actually end and space begin? The currently accepted boundary is at 100 kilometers, or a little over 60 miles above Earth's surface. But that's not a true definition so much as people shrugging and saying, meh. Why not here? It does have a physical basis, though, namely in how high an airplane can fly without destroying itself, and how low a satellite can orbit without burning up. This height above Earth's surface is called the Karman Line, after the Hungarian physicist Theodor von Karman. In the late 1950s, he was investigating how high airplanes could fly, which depends largely on three things, how fast they could go, how much lift they could generate with their wings, and how thin the air gets with height. What he found is that you reach a funny limit at 84 kilometers. To generate lift in the tenuous air up there, an airplane would have to travel so fast it would burn up. This is due to friction and gas compression, which can generate enough heat to vaporize the aircraft. Not long after, another physicist named Robert Jastrow looked at a similar problem, but from the top down. He calculated that a satellite dropping below 160 kilometers would burn up from the same forces. In the end, a compromised Karman line was reached at 100 kilometers. But does that make sense? In 2018, astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell reviewed this arbitrary border and showed that some satellites on elliptical orbits can survive dipping as low as 100 kilometers. And it turns out that you can make many orbits of the Earth dipping down to 90 or even 80 kilometers. But if you try and dip down to 70 kilometers, pretty soon you explode and burn up. So if we're going to use how low satellites can go to define where space begins, then the current Karman line of 100 kilometers is clearly too high. McDowell suggests the boundary be lowered to 80 kilometers, but should we worry about this in the first place? There are some actual concerns, like where does a country's airspace stop? You can't easily prevent a satellite entering over a particular country's airspace, which can have legal ramifications. Secondly, laws governing air flight are different from those covering space flight. At what point should one transition to the other? Mind you, there's no hard and fast physical limit to where the atmosphere ends and space begins. Like so many issues, it depends on context. As more people go into space, though, wherever it begins, I bet we'll be hearing more about this 